My role at Babson is the City Director of Lemonade Day Boston, and I look forward to ch chatting with you a little bit more uh, towards the end of our program. My role at this juncture is to introduce Marla Capozzi, who uh, we have a multi-faceted relationship with at Babson. Uh, her expertise at McKinsey as an innovation expert is entirely uh, fitting for both Lemonade Day as well as ETA at Babson College, which you're going to hear a bit about. Um, Marla is on our board and she offers extensive insight and support to us on a regular basis. So I'm going to ask Marla to come up and share some insights with you uh, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Marla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, what she neglected to mention is that despite my multifaceted relationship, I still haven't figured out how to say no to Len, who you will hear in a, in a little bit. Um, it's one of my goals for 2012, perhaps, but everything continues to be so much fun that it's hard to say no. Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about uh, creativity as we get further into the agenda on Lemonade Day. I work mostly with senior executives as a McKinsey consultant on innovation. The question that I tend to hear over and over again is, can I be creative? Can we be creative? Can we do this? One of my favorite stories was with the CEO of a life insurance company who said to me, look, we can't do this. We're the guys in suits. We're not Apple, okay? I'm just gonna outsource this. I've met with a bunch of guys. They wear blue jeans. You know, they come in, they just do this, and they're gonna give me some ideas. I said, okay, that's." fair, you're not Apple, but I think that you can do this. I think you really can. And he said, as if I hadn't been further insulted, uh, insulted enough, he said, you're just a girl in a suit. I don't know how you're going to be able to help me. And I said, okay, well, now, now you've given me a challenge here because we're going to go after this one. What he was right about was the fact that as we become experienced executives, it is much harder for us to be creative. And the reasons it's much harder are not necessarily all our fault, right? Our brains are developed to the point where what? They max out at age 30-ish, and we start on the downside. Not so great, right? The grooves in our brain get really deep the more we master our field of expertise, making it harder for our brain to jump around more easily, like a child's does. We get rooted in decision biases, and worse yet, our brain gets lazier and lazier, taking shortcuts to adopt new information and to make sense of things that we hear. So not necessarily inspiring, but the good news is, is that after years and years of research, neurologists have connected perception to creativity in our brains, which means that we are all capable of doing this. This isn't something that the privileged few can do. This isn't something that you have to show up in blue jeans and a black turtleneck to be able to demonstrate capacity to do this. So as a result of that, the more you change your perception, the more you change how you think about a question, how you think about a problem, how you frame something, the more likely your brain is to actually be more creative. Now that's not gonna take you through to action, of course, Right? There's other things like fear, social connections, and things. And Len's going to talk about ETA, Entrepreneurial Thought and Action, which is a whole methodology for addressing a lot of these challenges that we've been faced with for a really long time. So as Suzanne and I were talking about this for Lemonade Day, we thought, well, well that's interesting because you know children do this all the time. And then we said to ourselves, but what if they don't? What if the inner city kids don't get those childhood experiences of curiosity, of multiple perspectives, of hearing what's possible over and over again, of experiencing the fact that they can do things, the fact that they can uh, do business, that they can view themselves in a different way, not just viewing business or the opportunities in front of them in a different way. And so we thought, well, that's really interesting. And how can Lemonade Day you know, help solve that challenge? right? And so as we think about what Lemonade Day teaches, and we think about what entrepreneurial thought and action teaches us, this is a great way for both the children in the inner city to learn these skills early, as well as the skills that can help us every day as executives and leaders in our organization to be more creative, to see the things around us, 
to get out of the orthodoxies that constrain what we can and cannot do. And we thought, how terrible would it be for a child to actually feel like there are things that they can and cannot do at such a young age. And that LMNA Day was just one of the ways that we can help ensure that they start with that experience that everyone should have moving into adulthood and not necessarily start out with an adult brain, but move into, yeah, move into those opportunities. So I'm gonna actually turn it over to Len, who's gonna talk about entrepreneurial thought and action give you a sense of what this is, why it's important, and then we'll transition into our, into our speaker. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Len now for about a year and a half or so? Seems that long. It seems that long. Although, um, before he actually was uh, became president, we had a couple meetings, and Len was very uh, open to hearing the perspectives of those of, our, of those of the alumni of what was good and what was bad about the school. So he is very open-minded, um, and so it's just been a pleasure to work with him in the school uh, as a trustee. Thank you so much. And thank you all for coming to Babson's Boston campus. Uh, for those of you that haven't been here before, one of the marvelous things about this 3,300 square foot space um, is within the confines of the Boston media, most specifically our friends at the Herald. Uh, this is continuously defined uh, as the BATS in Boston campus. And, and so uh, we're able to actually make substantial hay uh, out of this. This is linked very much to the role that uh, we were offered to play uh, through the mayor's office uh, to become the academic partner of the city uh, in this area, uh, wildly and largely known as the Innovation District. And as you read the papers today and, and get a sense of the number of apartment complexes that are being planned here over the next two to three years, you begin to get a sense uh, that what many people thought of was a set of wildly hysterical propositions about changing the composition of this neighborhood, introducing a living, working, and nightlife environment that uh, rivals almost any other place in the United States. Uh, and people thought it was going to take somewhere in the neighborhood of another 10 to 20 years, um, I think we can actually begin to contemplate cutting that time substantially uh, as we look at uh, as we look at all of the things that are going on, the 80 companies uh, that have come to this area in the last uh, 12 months alone. Um, so there's a vibrancy, there's an excitement. This space uh, is used for um, uh, our graduate uh, fast track programs uh, will be used in the summer time linked up to all of the students that will be engaged in internship activities uh, all over town, um, enabling them to uh, participate in education and alumni activities without having to go out to Wellesley. Uh, we already offer evening MBA classes here uh, uh, on this site. Uh, and our, our aspiration is, uh, is to prove um, that this entrepreneurial investment um, in, in Boston uh, justifies an even bigger investment as we go forward and demonstrate the capacity of the institution uh, to uh, someday have on its logo Babson, uh, Babson Park and, uh, and Boston, along with uh, our San Francisco campus uh, down in the Mission District, which is roughly twice this size, uh, now already being very heavily used uh, for a portfolio of educational programs that allow us um, to connect people up to West Coast entrepreneurship as well as East Coast entrepreneurship, because as you know and read, they tend to have very different flavors uh, attached to them. So kind of being the college president and spending most of my time worrying about people from the ages of 18 and up. I'm being paid to worry about that. Uh, why am I here uh, to shill for uh, Lemonade Day? Uh, and why is it important that I do it from the perspective of being uh, BAPS and president? And, uh, and what does what we do on the college campus link up to, and how does it link up to what it is we're trying to do uh, with this very simple idea of providing a broader portfolio of 8 to 12 year olds uh, with a set of experiences 
uh, that are intended to open up their horizons uh, and their mindsets and their skill sets in ways in which many of us did unthinkingly and unquestioningly, unquestioningly as youth. We all had the opportunity to have a portfolio of these experiences, and they are not the norm in urban communities today. It's just not the case. And in the context of entrepreneurial thought and action, which we talk about as the fundamental method of problem solving uh, and action that sits alongside uh, what we're all skilled in, the scientific method okay, uh, of stimulus response, um, there is an explicit underlying logic that says the skill sets and mindsets associated with taking effective action in environments that are new and different and uncertain comes primarily through action, not by thought. So it is wonderful to contemplate putting eight to 12 year olds in a classroom and lecturing them about the evolution of the free enterprise system. Okay. And my guess is uh, there's nobody at the, this stage of your own adult development that has any deep interest in participating in that exercise. Uh, and there are very few 8 to 12 year old classroom teachers who are either interested in or capable of engaging in that exercise. And I can guarantee you it would yield no value. No value whatsoever. We could also engage in an exercise where we can talk about the underlying economics of business and manufacture a series of uh, experiences and a series of lecture discussions uh, where we can educate people uh, in all of the dimensions of financial literacy that are so fundamentally critical today. There's no question we can do it. It also, I guarantee, will not work. It just won't work. No one is interested, and very few people are capable of teaching it. So instead of obsessing about developing classroom curricula that are completely at odds with the learning styles, interest styles, mindsets, and experience base of 8 to 12 year olds in urban communities, why don't we tap into the explicit understanding that we have at an institution like Batson that says, for entrepreneurship to be taught and learned, it must be unleashed. For entrepreneurship to be taught and learned, it must be unleashed. And what Lemonade Day is all about, in the simplest way, through the construction of an experience of preparing for, executing against, and reflecting upon the experience of a lemonade stand, provide people with a simple, grounded, concrete experience um, that cannot be rivaled in traditional educational environments. It's just that simple. And we'll have plenty of opportunity today to be able to expose you to just what that is and just what that looks like. Now, we're blessed, quite honestly, with being part of a city that can actually imagine and execute on the logic of the innovation district. And in the process of working with the city, and most specifically with working with Mayor Menino, we have gotten incredible support in so many different ways for what we've been trying to do. And there are few people in this city who've been more active in helping us in so many different ways than Nick Martin, who works with the mayor's office and is in the back right now. Uh, and uh, the mayor is ill today and unfortunately can't be with us. And I'm not going to be presumptuous enough to ask Nick to speak on behalf of the mayor, because that is, in most environments, considered to be a career-limiting move. Uh, but I will, ask, I will ask Nick to speak on behalf of Nick for just a minute. And I know you're being called on the carpet, but just to reflect on the experiences of year one as we get into year two. On the spot. Well, thanks, President Selection. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm just Nick Martin from the mayor's office. Um, you know, when Suzanne came to me uh, a, a year or so ago uh, with the idea, I thought it was kind of crazy at first, but uh, figured it would be a fun event. 
And um, I didn't really have any idea what it would turn into. And uh, it turned into a great program that sort of reached hundreds of uh, Boston Public School kids, um, you know, uh, in, in a great way, in a fun way. Uh, the mayor always talks about uh, reaching kids with sort of learning opportunities outside the classroom. And uh, I think this is one of the great, the, one of the great programs. Uh, and so I'm excited, uh, you know, for the results from the first year, and I'm excited to see it grow in the second year. So thanks, everyone, for being here. Now, one of the best ways to be able to experience Lemonade Day is through stories. And I'm going to kind of give you one, literally, 30-second story. And then Nicole will work with me to actually turn you over to a video, which will give you a much more robust perspective on some of the things that we learned last year. Uh, but I was reminiscing about reminiscing, reminiscing about this story last night. Um, last year's Lemonade Day, uh, we're driving around. I'm going from Lemonade Stand to Lemonade Stand, uh, and uh, my wife and I show up at, with the mayor at Dudley Station, Dudley Fire Station, for uh, for a Lemonade Stand, and we're engaging uh, with the portfolio of young people who are really making this stand work. Uh, and it's just so cool to watch. And then I walk away, I'm talking to someone else, uh, and a gentleman comes over to me and, and says, like, do you have anything to do with this? And I introduce myself, said, yeah, I'm Lance Lesson, another President Bass, and we've been sponsoring this with my wife in town here today. Uh, and he said, well, I have to apologize to you. So I never met the guy. He said, you have to apologize to me. Why do you have to apologize to me? Because my daughter said she wanted to be involved in this lemonade stand thing. And I told her I thought this was the dumbest idea <laughs> I'd ever heard. And, uh, and, and just told her flat out, this is just a waste of your time. OK, so again, why are you apologizing? He said, well, my daughter's over there. He points to a young woman who's in the center, the hub of activity at this lemonade stand. Uh, she's busily engaging with the mayor having just finished a media interview. <laughs> and, and he says, uh, my daughter, um, it'd be hard for you to know that she's painfully shot. I said, yeah, from observation from a distance, it'd be hard to know. She, it's just beyond compare, painfully shy. And this activity has created an entirely different mood, orientation, and mindset. So I'd like you to meet my daughter. Great. Calls over his daughter, says, I want to introduce you to uh, President Schlesinger. He's the president of Baptist College that's doing, that's doing um, this Lemonade Day thing. And she looks up at me. She's an eight-year-old. She looks up at me and says, is that a charter school? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, zero concept. I mean, zero concept. Now, we've now had her concept. <clears throat> She spoke at a Lemonade Day event last month, uh, did a spectacular job, uh, and came up to me afterwards. And it was just great. She goes, this is really fun. Do you have any other speaking engagements? <laughs> right? So this is from someone defined as a father as painfully shy, who just through six weeks of preparation and an experience of selling lemonade in front of a fire station has been transformed. We went to this group, and you'll understand a little bit more about the program, where at the end of the program we ask people, uh, you know, with the money that you have earned, what are you going to buy, what, how much are you going to save, and what are you going to give away? And I'm engaging with this group, and I want to know a little bit more about what choices they've made, particularly about philanthropy. And they turn to me and say, we talked about it, and we voted to give all of our money to Dana-Farber. I said, all of it? You're not buying anything. No, we're giving all of our money to Dana-Farber. And I said, well, how did you reach that conclusion? We said, well, we know the kids that are over there, and they have a lot more needs than we have. So if you don't think we're in the business of shaping people's mindsets about the universe, opening up people's opportunity sets, uh, and with a very simple intervention, making a fundamental difference, hopefully seeing a little of this on video will help you to shape that. So it's Sunday, May 1st, and it's Lemonade Day here in the Boston metropolitan area. 
and the kids behind me, six to ten year old kids, are going to have their first experience of being able to build their own lemonade stand. They're going to have the joys of learning how to sell, the experience of actually making money, uh, and all the frustrations that will keep the day from being as smooth as they imagined before they actually got into it. I think Lemonade Day is a great day uh, for kids. I mean, it's a great day for the cities. You know, these young people are our future. You know, we have to invest in those young people. Blue Hill Boys and Girls Club. <gasps> Shout out to Babsley College. Woo! This is for Torch Club and Keystone. Lemonade. Lemonade. I I'm going in, waiting by the stand. Torch Club about to get paid. When we get mad cash, selling cold lemonade. lemonade. I'm sitting with Torch Club, having a discussion. Hear the drums, the bass, and the percussion. Hop in the community. Shout out to Babsley College. George Club, where we're all filled with knowledge. Yeah. When I pay, when I pay, and I drink lemonade. lemonade. Got Daddy or Dougie, what here that the type song is played. S H, we're noble and bold. George Club, George Club bring a lemonade, ice, ice, cold. ice cold. We are royalty, get ready to bow down. Bow Just down. a reminder, the sign says no hate is allowed. Nah. Without a doubt, you know we the best. Just with golden yellow. With a bright yellow vest I run into the studio I'll probably be late But first, let me take a seat And drink some lemonade Mom, ah! that'll be two dollars, babe lemonade so good I think what BAPS is doing Is teaching young kids at an early age How to run their own businesses in our own small way, with baby steps, what we're trying to do with Lemonade Day is make a contribution to providing people with experiences that allow them to recognize they can do things that they couldn't imagine. It's my hope that today, May 1st, Lemonade Day, our first in, in Boston, uh, becomes the first of many annual events here in the Boston area community and stimulates a number of entrepreneurial careers among the folks who are doing their lemonade stands today. My name is Tanija and this is a lemonade stand. We're donating money to Dana-Farber for kids that have cancer. In my classroom, we had a um, we had a charity for kids that had leukemia. The money that I hope that we reach is about a hundred dollars. We're gonna use the money to um, save it so we can do bigger things and go to places we've never been before and donate some of the money to charity. It's difficult um, putting up a stand in a windy day outside, uh, but we rolled with it, used a lot of duct tape. Um, they use posters, they're screaming, they're, they're out there yelling, you can hear them in the background, and they're really trying to pull people in. I can see a line for them, so apparently it's going really well. My hope for these kids is that they learn some skills to hopefully open their own business, or just you know skills of life, because it really uh, translates to anything they do in their, in their life, in any kind of work environment. We're trying to teach them a little bit about business, a little bit how to start a business, um, what goes into that, um, how to get a loan, how you pay back a loan, what revenue is, all of those things, as well as teamwork. Working on doing the lemonade day and trying to reach up to our big goal. It makes me feel very, very happy and inspired, and I just, I feel their energy. I think it's really great. They've worked so hard. We learned how to budget our money and, like, how much we should spend and, like, get to a goal and to our standard and, like, how to decorate things to make them look nice and profiting at the same time. We will learn how to be entrepreneurs and learn how to do business better. When I grow up, I'm hoping to use this fresh lemonade to use this profit as to help me be a lawyer. I had a couple of them very good. I suggest other people try them. Not bad stuff. Give me an L. L, you got that L, you got that L. E, you got that E, you got that E. M, you got that M, you got that M. Give me an O. O, you got that O, you got that O. Give me an N. N, you got that N, you got that N. Give me an A. A, you got that A, you got that A. Give me a D. D, you got that D, you got that D. Give me an E. E, you got that E, you got that E. What is that spell? Lemonade! That just gives you a little bit of a sense of what we were able to accomplish in year one. Figuring it out, taking small steps, coming to the table and seeing what was possible. And there's no question, based on what we learned in year one, 
the opportunities for year two are nothing short of extraordinary for the team that's putting this all together. Now, these ideas didn't start in Boston. Right? One of the marvelous things uh, about, uh, about entrepreneurship, particularly uh, great entrepreneurs, is they steal good ideas they see anywhere. Uh, and, uh, and Lemonade Day uh, is an idea that actually got brought to us at Babson by one of our alums in the Houston uh, market who actually been involved with Lemonade Day uh, in that area and, uh, and exposed us to the opportunity uh, and helped connect us to the people that helped us to frame uh, what, uh, what is really possible. Houston is the mothership uh, of sorts for uh, Lemonade Day with the uh, most substantive programs uh, and the longest history of experience. And one of the people actively involved uh, in Houston in making that program uh, what it really is, is, is John Schepter, who is our speaker today and the person who can actually provide us uh, with the broadest con context and perspective of what it is we're up to doing and what it is is really possible and I've contextualized that in the broader universe of opportunities that we're trying to provide to young people. I had the pleasure of uh, dining with John last night uh, and engaging him in a conversation about why he does this and where he's going. And I can assure you, uh, you're going to have a marvelous opportunity to both learn and interact around the things that I think we all care about. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. So John is the CEO of uh, Empirical, Imperial Sugar uh, and has been there for four years now. He has an extensive background in the sweetener industry going back to 2001. Uh, before that, had a series of manufacturing positions with, uh, with Monsanto. Um, he is, uh, without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, one of the more articulate champions uh, of free enterprise and clearly one of the most articulate supporters of Lemonade Day uh, in an environment where it has substantially more traction and track record. Um, first in his family uh, to attend college, uh, a graduate of, uh, of uh, RPI with an EMBA from Tulane. Uh, and I am just delighted to have you and share you uh, with this team uh, this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, John Shepard. Thank you. Well, that's very difficult to follow. The, uh, the video lays out for all of you the beginnings of the possibility. Um, I hope to invite you and engage you in a conversation about your city. What would Boston be like if you had 500,000 8 to 12 year olds involved in a transformational event? that would give them vision for their lives, confidence that whatever they do they can accomplish, that they would view education differently after the event as a vehicle for their future success, that they would engage themselves in their community in a way that what they felt they earned was part of their responsibility of transforming the lives of others that live in them. What if 500,000 of your youth had that, in, that experience? What would they be like as 22 year olds if they started that beginning of their very critical stage of early development with the confidence and clarity of purpose that they could be somebody. How many of our youth are lost in the education system simply because they don't know why they're there? They don't know what they're going to do. Unfortunately, in our current economy, we have transitioned ourselves in a way that we have lost the opportunity for children to experience business. Most of us grew up at a time where our economy was anchored in the family business. Many of us probably worked in the family business of some type, or you certainly had friends that did. Most of you probably experienced paper routes, mowing lawns, babysitting, working at a grocery store, all of the types of jobs that existed for youth when we were children. And we touched business as part of our educational and learning experience as children 
and we brought that context into the classroom. And most of us went to college with a purpose of that being the vehicle to get to some place. Most of the youth I interview today that come out of college don't know why they, they don't know why they went to college. They changed their major multiple times and they don't know what they want to do in their career now that they're graduating. Most. Now, that's not a few. That's like eight out of ten graduate college without knowing what they want to do in their lives. Now I know that's not true of Babson. <laughs> but it, of the people I interview across this country, that is our reality. Why? Because most of them did not have a business experience as a youth, and they had no vision going into their education at the high school level and into their college levels as to where it was going to take them. I assert that Lemonade Day is part of an answer, an opportunity for us to transform our communities. If we can turn on your 500,000 8 to 12 year olds to learning as a vehicle to their personal success, we can turn them on that they have a contribution to give back to their community when they are business leaders, what will happen to the city of Boston 20 years from now? When you have most of those children wanting to start their own business as opposed to working for somebody else, what will happen to Boston? <coughs> most of the children that participate in Lemonade Day don't stop there. Lemonade Day in Houston, their first year, had about 2,800 children participate. Last year, four years later, 57,000 children. The expectation this year is to exceed 80,000 children involved. The police department approached the leadership of Lemonade Day after the second year when they had nearly 12,000 participants. And they said, you know, you have changed our summer. We have to add staff for the whole summer because all your children that get turned on on lemonade day they do lemonade stands all summer <laughs> and we're having to be out there to patrol and make sure that everything maintains its order uh, and its safety they don't stop on that day they have a transformational moment that they take into their lives and they do lemonade stands for a while but most of them go on to their second entrepreneurial experience. I met a seven-year-old girl that took her proceeds, bought a snow cone machine, and that's what she did all summer long, selling snow cones. And when she got done selling snow cones, she decided to put up a website, and she started selling jewelry that she made at home. So they go on to their sequential experiences very, very quickly after this event. Why is this so powerful? So let's, let's talk about that this morning. I'm going to try to do two things. First, give you a little bit of the passion I have for this initiative. And secondly, to share with you what the children take away from this. So what is it we're doing? We're giving children an, an experience in critical life skill development. If they take away anything from Lemonade Day, it's not of importance. It's not how to do a piano, which they learn how to do. It's not even the four P's of marketing, which they experience. It's vision for their life. If I could have done anything for my children when they were seven, year old, seven years old, it was to give them a vision for who they could be. And I didn't have Lemonade Day uh, as an opportunity uh, for my children. But I sure wish I did, and I had the opportunity to do it over again and give them that experience. Because I see what happened in those children's lives. We are talking about tomorrow's leaders. The 500,000 8 to 12 year olds are going to run this city 25 years from now. They're going to be the core of the businesses of this city. When you all are retiring and hoping that the city continues, they are going to be the economy. So that's who's involved. It is the basis for economic transformation. Why has the U.S. economy been successful? Because every time the rest of the world caught up to what we were doing, we changed the game. We reinvented ourselves through what? Entrepreneurism. That has been the heart of the U.S. economy for 200 years. And we have, in our great wisdom, eliminated the training ground for tomorrow. 
models entrepreneurs with the with the abstraction of childhood jobs from our society. We need to put it back in if we have any chance of continuing what we do really well, which is reinvent ourselves. So that is what's going on here. It's if we're giving children an opportunity to experience entrepreneurism for the first time in their lives. How, through community and parental investment in children, and when it's in May, but it starts in January. Because we're starting with you. We will then register children, pass out the workbooks. Caring adults will work with children to prepare their business plans, and then they will execute in May. I feel very strongly about this, that entrepreneurs are not taught. You provide educational information to them, but entrepreneurs are through experience. That's how they become entrepreneurs. They try it. They, they fail at it, they succeed at it, they try at it, they fail at it, they succeed at it. That's how entrepreneurs are built. We're giving children their first experience as entrepreneurs. They're going to run their own proprietary business with Lemonade Day. Entrepreneurial experiences are, are, are beneficial because they create self-esteem in the process. They take courage it takes courage and it transforms it into confidence. And that confidence is what makes them great students. It's that confidence that allows them to be the volunteer to lead. It's that confidence that gets them engaged in other activities that continue this life skill development. Successful business and life skills are simulated, and this is the heart of, I understood our conversation last night, of the Babson education, or the Babson method, is led like some time, okay? Is experiencing, experiencing education, experiencing, trying activities that create a change in mindset, and a change of view, and a change of mind. Well, some of the things that they do learn is how to do their first budget. They actually build a business plan. They negotiate a startup loan because you have to have money in your hand to buy the raw materials to start to run your business on Lemonade Day. That money comes from somebody other than yourself. So you have to borrow that. And they have their first experience of talking about interest. Are you going to pay interest back on your loan or not? Okay. In Houston, some of the banks have actually joined and participated. And they have microcredit opportunities for parents to bring their children in. So the children actually set up their first bank account with the bank. And they borrow money from the bank with a predetermined interest rate. And they have that whole experience now of engaging with the financial institutions of their city. Something that they will carry forward for the rest of their lives. They actually see a bank as a friend in this, at, at this time in their life. <laughs> and if your first experience with a bank is as an adult when you're taking out your home loan, it may not feel like a friendly relationship. They do, they have a real identity with the four P's of marketing. One of the tools of the kit is the four P's of marketing in child's life. Product, price, place, and promotion. Okay? They learn about the importance of putting your stand in a place that has lots of velocity in front of it. people. You need to have a lot of people to sell a lot of lemonade. Right? They learn them. You have to have a product that tastes good, and frankly, that's unique and different from the stand that's 100 feet from you. Because if their lemonade tastes better than yours, all the crowd's going to go over there. So they learn the importance of product. They learn that if they price their product at $5 a glass, they're probably going to sell less than if they sell it at $1 a glass. So they start to understand price point through this experience. And all of them learn promotion. They make signs in advance of the day, and they put their colorful signs up on their stand. But I have yet to see a stand that one hour after they start, where the children aren't out in front of their stands, and advertising with a lot of animation. Okay. That moment, when they go from the stale sign that's selling their product behind the stand, hiding there behind their protective space, to when they get out in front of their stand and they're now engaged with their customer is when they transform from courage to confidence. That happened in that moment. Four P's of marketing in a real sense at an eight-year-old level. They're communicating with customers, 
stakeholders and employees. Most of the children involved hire employees, and they're in the form of brothers and sisters that are younger. Mm -hmm. And they negotiate important things like wages. How much are you going to get for being here today? Are you going to get equal wages, less wages, more? What do they do with their employee when the employee gets tired two hours after they've started and they have six more hours to go? They have an, a, a supervisor employee experience, again, in an eight-year-old company. They have to adjust their plan, as Len, Len said. It was windy on your day, okay? Nobody planned for wind, I'm sure, when, in their business plan, but they had to adjust to that on the fly. Many of them didn't, ex didn't plan to have a competitive business within arm's reach of their stand. When you get up here in the city of Boston to 100,000 stands, you're going to have some neighborhoods where there are 20 stands lined up one after another. So they have to plan their, their business on the fly with the competitors that showed up. They have to manage fatigue. They get tired. Their employees get tired. Their caring adult gets really tired. <laughs> uh, most importantly here, they make their own money. Many of the disadvantaged youth that will participate in Lemonade Day have never <clears throat> had their own money. And this is a case where they make a product, they sell a product, and they receive cash in their hands. The principles of Lemonade Day are to save a little, spend a little, and share a little. The three S's. That's taught at the beginning of their introduction to Lemonade Day, and it's reinforced through the entire program. They now have that money in their hand. Are they going to spend 100% of it? Are they going to save 10% of it? Are they going to share 20% of it? What well, we find in the city of Houston and other cities that I have participated in as a title sponsor is that the children have a tendency to give away 30 to 50% of what they own. They have caring hearts that are quite different than we are as adults. Uh, and it's amazing how they re-engage from a perspective of social responsibility, profit with a purpose, whatever you want to categorize this as, community responsibility, they engage with them. <clears throat> It's their first opportunity in most cases to give their own money to someone that has need. Do you think that transforms how they feel about themselves. What esteem is built in their life when they take their $10 and they give it to the local animal shelter so that they can feed the dog as opposed to have to put it to sleep? What happens in that child's life when they're able to do that? Key learning experiences. Well, uh, we could take a business school perspective here. Uh, they plan and operate a business. Uh, they make money. Uh, they get courage to try another business. Uh, and they develop an entrepreneurial spirit. Those are really, really good things. I hope that all of the children that participate in your Lemonade Day walk away with that. But maybe even more important is they gain from the courage to try, the confidence and esteem in themselves. They become a turned on citizen. They have become a turned on student. They become a turned on participant. Boys and Girls Clubs of America, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, have embraced Lemonade Day as an incredible feeder program for them. Why? If the first experience for a child as a teenager is Boy, Girl, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Boys Clubs, Girl Scouts, I don't know. Okay. If that's their first experience, there is a lot of hand-holding, or maybe we'll call it babysitting, that has to go on. The children don't have vision when they walk into the program, when they've had no previous experience. When they come out of a lemonade day experience, they're already thinking, that they're able to do anything they try. They're already believing that in the future they're going to run their own business. They're already engaged in everything they do as a vehicle for their future success. What do you think they do to Boy Scouts when they walk in with that attitude? They do everything that you possibly can do in Boy Scouts. If you're in 
Girls Club of America, what do they do? They're the volunteer, they're the leader, they're the first to step in the, in the line to do whatever it is that's possible to do because they come already engaged. They have vision for themselves. They change the experience of the older teen development organization. Practicing life is the most important educational experience. Glenn said it in his comments. None of you like to be lectured. I'm going to try not to lecture too much. None of you, I don't like to be lectured. I like to participate. Why? Because the educational experience is a simulated, the transformational opportunity, the possibility of being different is accelerated and amplified by participating. We learn better with our hands, our feet, and the engagement of our mind in an activity than we do listening. And that's what we're talking about. That's what you base the whole BAPS in education on. So this is a call to action for you. Because we're inviting you to join what we're doing. We are on a mission to change Boston forever. It will never be the same. Because we are going to engage the children of Boston and invite them to be tomorrow's entrepreneurs that will raise up the businesses that will transform this city into one of the global economic leading centers of the world. Boston's already doing really well. I grew up in New Hampshire. This is a different city than the one that I grew up next to. Back 50 years ago, Boston wasn't a place that you wanted to visit as a child. It was a pretty dangerous place. It's not that way around here anymore. It's an incredible place. They've done a great job. But Boston clearly is not one of the top 20 cities of the world if you want to think about economics. Why? Why can't it be? I assert if you engage your youth in becoming an entrepreneurial powerhouse that Boston can be a revolutionary place for the world. So I invite you to that dream. Well, let's talk about sponsorship for just a couple of minutes. Okay. You could be a donor. Len likes donors. And we talked about that last time. Right? <laughs> in love with donors. They write checks and they help fund things that the university does. Well, Lemonade Day needs people to write checks to offset the cost because one of the principles of Lemonade Day is regardless of what economic state your home is in, you can play in this game because it's all underwritten by donor funds. All right. We want that. It's important for you and your company to be associated with youth development. It's good public relations. If that's all you take away from Lemonade Day, shame on you. Really. Because there's such a greater possibility here. Your employees can get involved. What happens to your employee when they are out there with the children watching this transformational event? When they see this youth that is shy, as the father described her, right? Extremely shy. That kind of conjures up in my mind that she doesn't talk with people, adults for sure, strangers, never. Giving a media interview just a few hours after starting that morning. One year later, asking Len if he has more speaking engagements for her to participate in. When your employee is involved in that transformation, they come back proud of their company. They come back excited about who they are, who their company is in the community. <coughs> and they find new purpose in the job that they have. It's a great opportunity for you as an employer to engage your employees. And I can assure you, the Lemonade Day staff here in Boston will take all the volunteers that you conjure up with your employees. I had a company day, and I have ever since I became a title sponsor for Lemonade Day. We have a day in April for our employees where we bring out the 
VIPs of Lemonade Day to our company. We invite all of our employees to bring their grandchildren, their children, their nephews, their nieces, their neighbors, children to the company. And we have an all-day event of celebrating, having fun, doing lemonade stands for them to see what one is like, how to work it, uh, and signing them up to be participants in Lemonade Day. We make it real. We get our families engaged. We have, the, we have the opportunity presented to our parents and our grandparents who are employees to bring the people most important in their lives into their workplace in a positive environment. And then we have a few competitions that we've run. Like last year we handed out port, uh, disposable cameras to our employee, uh, employees. And we ask them on Lemonade Day to go take photographs of the lemonade stands that you find. Uh, and we're going to pick a few winners of the best stands that you found from the photographs that you took. That took them out into the community on that day in a way that they probably wouldn't otherwise have engaged. And they had the experience that was so critical for them to have. With regard to press, uh, Lemonade Day is going to do a lot of press in Boston leading up to the May event. Okay? If you are a sponsor as opposed to just a donor, then you will find your company being associated with the logo of Lemonade Day. Uh, when there's a billboard in Houston, um, it has Lemonade Day and Imperial Sugar Company right there with it. Now, now that Lemonade Day touches more than a million people in Houston, because the average stand has at least 10 people buying <coughs> um, uh, lemonade. In fact, last year uh, in the city of Houston, nearly 4 million glasses of lemonade were sold on Lemonade Day. Um, when that number of people in Houston touch Lemonade Day, Imperial Sugar is in the picture for them. Okay? It is a wonderful moment for me as a company leader see my company viewed uh, and embraced as a, a respectable and responsible community. And sponsors lead from the top. If you're a donor company, somebody in your charitable giving part of your organization, buried in the Human Resources Department, likely, uh, will know the Lemonade Day of this. If you're a sponsor, the CEO, will be a spokesperson for what can happen in the city of Boston. Why this is personal to you. Um, I go on TV in, 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 in Houston, in uh, Austin, San Antonio, different places that I have gone to on Lemonade Day okay, uh, or leading up to it. Most of the television stations give free time for pitching Lemonade Day. Okay, it's part of their community service. Uh, I've been on all of the local television stations talking about the importance of Lemonade Day, why it's important to me, why it's important to them. I could have never paid for that kind of exposure in the city of Houston. But it was a gift that came along with being part of this great and incredible program. <clears throat> so the difference. Um, we've hit on some of these. If you become a sponsor, co-brand with Lemonade Day. Uh, I've done interesting little things. One year, we put a new product sample in every bag. It went to 29,000 homes, by the way. Uh, any of you uh, do home, home marketing in your business? Consumer products? I'm sure some of you had some exposure with that. It's extremely expensive to do a home use trial with a new product easily to get 100 homes to try out a new product and give me feedback, it would cost me a half a million dollars, or if you get that kind of feedback. I had 28,000 homes take home my free sample. Uh, and we had a little competition that we gave away a trip to Washington, D.C. if you just sent us back the card with your comments about our product. We received back over 11,000 cards of families wanting to take their children to Washington, D.C. about our product. That was one year. 
another year, I leased space on lemonade stands to put one of my new products. Again, I, I tend to use Lemonade Day as a way of launching new products. So I invited participants in Lemonade Day in the city of Houston to let me lease for $10 a space on their stand to put my product alongside their product. Every year we come up with a new innovative little way of being a participant, not only a sponsor or not only a funder of Lemonade Day, but a participant on the stands or in the stands of Lemonade Day. You would be shocked, maybe not, but I'm pleased how many of those stands use Imperial Sugar in their Lemonade. In fact, many of the children tell their customers that their Lemonade is really good and it's healthy for you because they have Imperial Sugar in it. When they are 25, 30, 35 in the future, what sugar do you think they're going to be buying off the shelf? The one they remember from their childhood. I encourage you, if you become a sponsor, to support the organization with your public, rela public relations support. You all do advertising in the local area. It doesn't cost you any more to add Lemonade Day into that advertising. Secondly, to be creative about how you can identify your product with Lemonade Day. Uh, and thirdly, for how you can engage your employees in a real experience so that they, in their volunteering with the organization, can expand the reach of the Lemonade Day organization. I'll end by saying, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, as a CEO of a publicly traded company, if I had had my own first experience as a participant in a lemonade stand. As a six-year-old, my mother took me to the front of our house with a table, a chair, a jar of lemonade, and a pickle jar, uh, and sat me down out there, uh, and I had my first experience making I didn't know why I was out there initially, but I sure got the message after the first person stopped and put the nickel in the pickle jar. I got it. And I had that experience of getting out of the chair. Before too long, I was at the edge of the street promoting my stand, come over and put nickels in my jar. I had that experience as a six-year-old. Um, I went from being an average student prior to that event to being a top-level student in my class after. I went from B's and C's to a straight A student. Why? Because I gained some confidence, some vision in who I was from that experience. My mother didn't know what she was doing, but she turned me on in a way that changed my life. Through what? The simple little thing called eliminate today. Yeah, it was simple, but it was critical in my life. And it's been critical in the lives of many, many senior executives around this country. I invite you to join us. Please consider what you can do as individuals, as companies, uh, and get behind this program to change your city. Thank you. John, before you get too comfortable, any questions for John? No, no? Okay. Just wanted to be sure that we address. Yes, a question. Houston is, is, is thought of today as the prototypical American city of the future because you're one-third black, one-third brown, one-third white. Yes. How have you um, approached the three communities and gotten them all involved in Houston? How can we follow your lead? Um, I, I think it's uh, uh, particularly critical to have a strategy of registration. Okay. Um, particularly uh, in the disadvantaged neighborhoods, they're not going to come to you. Okay? And, 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 I, I, and certainly that's the heart of, of land in, in starting in Boston, is to get to the disadvantaged neighborhoods. Um, where are they? Uh, they're likely in the YMCA. Uh, they're in the Boys and Club, Girls Clubs. They're certainly in school in some capacity. Um, 
uh, the disadvantaged neighborhoods generally have much uh, tighter relationship as a family with their church, uh, their religious institutions. Uh, and so the, the outreach to registration has been through the infrastructure where children already participate. Um, neighborhood organizations, schools, clubs, churches, uh, religious institutions. Uh, so that, that has been how we, we've uh, really reached a broad spectrum uh, of participation. And you're right, Houston is 41% Hispanic first major city to be with a majority population of what we used to call minorities. Great. John, thank you. So that's a perfect segue for me, actually, to just share with a, a, about two minutes um, with you before we say our farewell and um, give you the opportunity to get back to work. So in Boston, we were so lucky this past year to be able to partner not only with the city, but also with these youth-based organizations that John has referenced. So uh, for us, if you can think of an organization that works with children, that's a partner that we would like to have. So last year we were fortunate enough to work with the Boys and Girls Club, with Boston Center for Youth and Families, with Friends of the Children, with Big Sisters, with Girl Scouts, this year, to name a few, this year we're looking forward to adding citizen schools. We have a couple of apprenticeships we're doing with them. Um, and fortunately for us, we are beginning to pilot Lemonade Day in the Boston Public Schools. So let me just back up for one minute and tell you about what that looks like. Lemonade Day can be experienced in one of typically three ways here in the city. <coughs> one way is through a caring adult. You sit down at a table with your children or your niece or your nephew or your neighbor, two or three kids maybe at a small round table, and you pace the instruction according to their learning style. 14 point business plan, and you go at a pace that you know is going to be comfortable to them. The second model is through these youth-based organizations that we mentioned. Whether it's the Boys and Girls Club, whether it's Friends of the Children, it's a mentoring program that is engaging kids in their after school time frames. Okay, and in that particular space, we have a teacher's guide that is really vibrant, that again walks the kids through their cool little entrepreneurial workbooks, but it does it in a classroom setting. It makes complete sense. It provides for extensions for the teachers to offer to engage the students. The third way, which is what I alluded to initially, was this concept of actually embedding Lemonade Day within the curriculum of the public school or the private school. Super exciting in Houston, last year they piloted what's, what we call Serving Up Lemonade Day, Serving Up Lemonade. They piloted that in their schools. This year, for the first time, 15,000 middle school kids in the city of Houston will experience the Lemonade Day curriculum as part of their math and financial literacy uh, school work <coughs> during their school day. What an amazing concept. So this year, we are piloting with a couple of Boston Public Schools and a couple charter schools to see how we might embed the curriculum within their math programs at school. So those are the, way that, the ways that Lemonade Day is experienced here in Boston. Last year, quickly, we had a really great footprint. I want to say thank you to an amazing list of sponsors. Some of them are here. Uh, RBS Citizens sponsored us, BJ's, Pepsi. You saw some of the names earlier. The Remodeling Company, Gary Moffey's here. Uh, Cannon, Fred C. Church, and the, and the list goes on. What we're excited about this year is expanding our footprint to engage more partners, more kids, and to, to really transform neighborhoods here in the city. Um, I want to share a story with you, and then uh, just to close. So uh, Stephanie Magner, who is a big, a big sister, and her little had their engaging um, instruction around Lemonade Day, and then they finished the Lemonade instruction on Lemonade Day with their stand, um, and they chose to be in the back bay. Very critical decision on their part. The stand was super successful financially, but that, as Stephanie describes to me, is only a piece of why she saw this was so transformational. 
The first part she explained to me was, for the first time ever, her little had the experience to recognize how business operates and how business leaders think. Transformational for young kids. Why does McDonald's offer a happy meal? How can McDonald's and Wendy's and Burger King all survive? Great platform for conversation between Stephanie and her little. The second piece that she mentioned to me was, Suzanne, you can't believe how um, Melanie all of a sudden transformed as she was selling lemonade into feeling as though she was really important. That there was something about her that was special, extraordinary. And then the third piece, which is back again to what John has mentioned, is that Stephanie took the time and the, and the energy to take Melanie to Children's Hospital to give her donation. So the, the process comes full circle. And, and the quality of that experience is really important to us at Babson. The quality of the experience that this little had through the instruction and mentoring of her big was phenomenal. So we ask you today to partner with us. I know many of you um, may have to reflect and think about a sponsorship opportunity. We've enclosed in the program a card that provides you with some different sponsorship levels and opportunities. You know, for us, it's transformational, as we've said, when a little girl in Dorchester says, I want to give all my money away to kids at Dana-Farber because they need it more than I do. It's incredibly empowering for us when we talk to the principal of the Edwards School of Charleston, Leo, and he says to us, I want this in my extended day program. This is the kind of experiential learning I want to offer to my kids. So we're starting as a footprint. We invite you to, to join us and be part of this. And we thank you so, so much for coming. Appreciate it.